Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today is part two of um, our watercolor lap book that we've started. Now I do apologize, I have a contractor upstairs who's hammering away. So uh, hopefully it won't uh, be too annoying through the video, but this is my only day off and I, I need to get a video done or I'm not gonna, gonna fall way behind. And I've also been really itching to, to play with this. So, um, I thought we would continue with what we were doing before with covers. And uh, we've built the, the actual layout of the book in video one. So now I was thinking we could uh, work on the cover a little bit and maybe get the paint in. So I've decided that this is a bit too blue for me. Uh, so I'm gonna turn, tone it down. Uh, and I'm gonna do that by adding uh, neutral tones and some ink. And again, you're going to decorate your lap book whatever way appeals to you the most. And uh, I am just not into the super bright blue right now. It's a bit too blue for me. So I want to tone it down. And I've already lost my ink. <laughs> it's going to be one of those videos. All right. I thought I had taken it out. I thought I'd be all organized. But I'm not. So what we will do is, what I do have on me though, is this distressed, distressed vintage photo in a spray. So I will use the spray and just use it on my damper like this. And it's gonna be a lot more potent, but it will still work. So I'm just gonna dirty this up a little bit, um, just to tone it. Again, it's just a little too loud for me. And I really like that kind of vintage, vintage vibe, as you know. And uh, just gonna add this really quick on here. I'll start in this section. So I've picked out um, some colors and papers that I kind of like, and we're just kind of gonna try and make this work. Now I've got to figure out what was going where. <laughs> this one I found I really like because it's got this really pretty. Really pretty decorative etched border. So I thought we could do that. And I should have probably taken my glue out ahead of time. Make sure that works. Uh, so yeah, this is my day off. And I really wanted to get rolling on this lap book. And this contractor showed up to finish some of the framing. So he's up there hammering away, doing his thing, which is great. Don't get me wrong, we need that. Need to get rolling on this house. The winter that we've had has been pretty mild. I can't really complain. Um, we had a really, really super cold, uh, super cold, minus 38 at night here last week. It was insane cold. I don't, I don't remember it ever being that cold for more than two days. And it was, I think two nights here, it was that cold. It was crazy. But we made it through, and uh, and we're just gonna keep plugging away at the house slowly now because of the winter. So here is another little matte piece. So I also coffee dyed all of these. I don't know, know if you remember them in the last video or not, but I took a whack load of stuff and just coffee dyed it, um, just to tone it down as well. And I really like the look of this matte paper. I think it's like a survey book from way back when. And then this is another piece of cardstock that I had coffee dyed or threw in the pot. And I thought this would be kind of nice here. And I thought maybe we could do like a watercolor since this is the cover. So remember the second, if you're doing a four panel like this, the second one in is going to be the cover of your book. And I should have probably folded that while it was drying. Duh. Okay, that didn't even line up where I wanted it. Let's start that again. Let's, let's re-glue that. Sorry. Busy talking and not concentrating. Glue's still pretty wet. So yeah. Okay. Let's start again. So when you're building these lap books, you do want to work with the folds. You do re want to reinforce that and glue things really, really well. Because they do take quite a, quite a bit of abuse opening and closing. And... Uh, you won't be talking away to somebody when you're doing it, most likely. So you'll be able to concentrate a little better. You also want to make sure that it opens too. So 
So I'm going to get my bone folder here and just reinforce all the spots and just kind of reinforce the glue. Scrub it down and kind of stretch the paper and fold the paper, make sure it's all glued. This is right on the edge, which is where I wanted it to be because I'm probably gonna do a piece of lace here or something. I just really like this decorative element on the front, which is what I was after. So it's bubbling here. So we'll add a little more glue and get it in there. So you do want to take your time and make sure you glue things down well. You can clean up the edges and everything after. Okay, so let's do this one. So as I was saying um, before I realized I wasn't gluing it properly was that um, this is the second panel, which is the cover of your book. So you want to bear that in mind when you're picking things out. So I'm going to glue, that's too small, this one. Let's glue this one down. So if you decided if you're going to try a lap book or not, it can be a little intimidating to do one. Oh, that hammering is irritating, sorry. It can be a little intimidating to do one uh, for the first time, but, you know, just have fun with it. You, The whole process of learning with papers and journaling is what I like the most. I mean, you uh, you make mistakes and learn from it. And trust me, I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, but you do learn a lot, and then you don't make those mistakes again. And sometimes those mistakes turn into really fun results. So you think you've got something in mind in your head, and then it turns out completely different than what you anticipated, which is something I also encounter a lot. Um, but it is, it's just so much fun to, to uh, experiment and challenge yourself with these things and using up your materials in different ways. So because these papers are so small, they're having a really hard time wrapping the edge. I should have gone with a little bit wider paper maybe. But I didn't want to go too far into here because I want the centerpiece to be the, uh, I'm just gonna let it glue. Um, I want the centerpiece to be the watercolor because it's a watercolor lap book. I want it to be a watercolor on the front. I'm having a really hard time concentrating and talking today. <laughs> What's that about? I'm gluing, apparently. I can't glue anything. Maybe I wasn't supposed to do this video today. Maybe I should have just taken a total day off. I just a good way to avoid doing the, the work I have to do with my laundry. <laughs> oh no, I can't do laundry. I'm going to do a YouTube video. All right, I'm gonna see if that's held and then try and fold it in a second because I'm gonna make sure that it can handle it. Otherwise, I'll have to put something else there. It's almost, almost on. There we go. All right, wow. Yeah, so I would recommend going a little wider than your fold on the edges just so it's easier to glue down. Don't do what I just did. But the reason I did that is because I do want uh, a blue frame around this piece here so that I can put a watercolor in here. So I actually coffee dyed some watercolor paper. And I wanted to see if it will still absorb um, watercolor. So it's, it's got to be here somewhere. Here it is is a piece yeah so I this is a just the cheapy watercolor paper that I always get and I coffee dyed it and I thought it would be kind of fun so I thought we could do a little watercolor today along with our theme at least my theme it might not be your theme but you can always add watercolors in so I'm just gonna and you know me I, I'm not one for measuring I'm just kind of going to wing it. 
So I don't even know if this copy paper will absorb watercolor now because it's been soaked in water with coffee. But there's one way to find out. So I'm, as you can see, I'm all over. You know, most people would finish doing the corners, but not me, I'm just diving right in. <laughs> so you might not want to follow step by step with me. Um, so because we have a blue here, I thought I'd do something like a blue bell or maybe, um, I don't know, a blue, what is that one called? Delphinium or something really tall and thin. So I am, I don't have any, I don't have any kind of idea, um, any visual with me. So I'm just kind of making it up as I go. So I'll bring you down a little closer for this and hopefully remember to pull you back out. So I am just doodling some flowers here and we'll see what they turn out look to look like. Uh, Cause I'm not sure what bluebells actually look like. We don't have bluebells here. At least I, I don't have them anyways. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's got to stay a little warmer for bluebells. But this is starting to look more like foxglove anyways. Now foxglove, we can grow here. There might be bluebells here. Don't quote me on that. I've never seen them. I know that uh, we get them out west. Oh, maybe he's taking a break. I don't hear any hammering. So I am just doing these little tiny shapes of flowers. I'm not doing tons of detail. I'm doing a flower in front of my stem here. And then I'll do some flowers behind. And then maybe I'll have this one open facing me. This one growing away from the stem. Yeah, this definitely looks more like a foxglove, but nothing really specific. So I think if I did more of like a jagged edge like that, it would look more like a, a bell flower. So we could have a mixture of all kinds of different flowers on here, on one stalk. Okay, so there's one there. Let's do another one coming out this way. And again, you don't have to do this. I just can't help but watercolor when the mood hits. And on my day off is my opportunities. Now my hands are dirty because I was actually just oil painting uh, for the first time. Um, I'm not a huge oil painter because I don't like blending wet on wet. With a watercolor, I find it is wet on wet, but you have time for, there's a, it dries pretty quick if it's not overly saturated when oil takes weeks to dry. So I find I get a lot of muddy paintings but I still have fun dabbling. I think it's still fun to try. So is that a fun composition? Even on camera here. Um, I think maybe I'll do just a tiny little guy in the back here. So I'll just do these squiggles and then a tiny one back here. That's just starting to open. So there's a little bit something in this negative space, maybe a little taller. So composition-wise, I want something a little interesting for the cover. But I, I don't want to spend hours on it. I just want to make it interesting. And then just, again, scribbling. Now we can play with the water color. So I've got my brush somewhere and some water. And my little trusty travel kit. And I'm going to use this, which I think is cerulean or maybe cyan cyan blue we'll go with cyan blue and i'm gonna just drop it into where the flower bells are i'm not even painting them in perfect i'm just dropping the color in so the paper seems to be absorbing still has the ability to absorb even though it has taken all that coffee dye so that's kind of cute. And then I'm just going to rinse the color out and I'm going to just wet it a little bit and kind of bleed those colors. Because I like a very loose approach. And then if you put a little bit of this blue maybe in the back, it kind of implies there's some in the background that are out of focus. Maybe. That's the idea anyways. I'll go in with a little bit more concentrated color, a few spots, 
And again, it's still wet on wet, so it's still going to bleed. Now, if you like more control over your watercolor, you would take your time doing this. But not me. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to take some of this olive green. Probably should have cleaned my palette here. And I think this is the Distressed Oxide sprayed in here, this vintage photo. So it's going to turn it kind of a muted green. So it's dirty, dirty looking. And I'm going to throw that in the stalks here. And again, it's going to bleed with the blue. And I'm just throwing it in. Just let the paint have fun. I'm going to grab some of that. Oh, he's back. He's hammering. Uh, where'd my paper towel go? I swear I brought some. Okay, I guess not. Well, here's some here that we used to stain. So we'll grab it. The Distressed Oxide. And put a little bit, oops, sorry, a little bit more darker down here. And I love watercoloring with these Distressed Inks sprays. They're really fun to play with, with water. So just a little more drama. I don't want to go too dark, but a little contrast is nice. We can even do a little splattering. All right, I think that will do. Just a cute little loose sketch with watercolor. So I'm going to pull you back out again a little bit. Sorry, I hope I don't make you dizzy. There. All right, so it is still wet, so we've got to be careful. But I think that's where I'm going to put that. So what I do want to do, I find I'm missing blue here now. I'm I'm all about borders. I don't know why. I just, I like layer on top of layer on top of layer. Um, so I think what I will do is cut this maybe just a little bit more narrow. This is even straight. I don't think that's straight there. Just so I can maybe find some blue paper and have the border show up a little more. Should have probably looked at that before I started painting. <laughs> but this is how I craft. Um, some people are very organized and laid out and know exactly the direction they're going to go in. And others just kind of wing it. And I'm a winger. I just, I don't know where it's going to take me until I go off in that direction and then I do a full 160 and head off in another direction so um you, you might find that irritating in my videos I don't know let me know what you think about how I craft is it easy to follow is it confusing uh because I would like to know so I have this little scrap left over or something like that just an indication no I don't have a lot of scraps left, unfortunately. I did have a full sheet of blue somewhere. Oh boy. Yeah, this one. This might be a little too busy for me. Hmm. So I only planned a little bit because I wanted to wing it with you guys. Yeah, that's too busy. Okay, so what I think I'll do is maybe we'll just use the watercolor and see if this will absorb any of the blue, blue. So I'm just going to wet it. And I'm not going to go to the edge with the water. I don't need to paint the whole thing. But I just want to go to the edge where I want the paint to go, and we'll see if we can get this to turn blue. And if not, I'll have to find another solution. And again, why not add more watercolor to our watercolor lap book? Are you guys making a lap book? I was going to ask. I think I started asking that and then I got distracted. I'm curious uh, what your themes are. So please comment below what it is you're working on. All right. I think that kind of works. Kind of fun. A little different. Not what I had in mind. But hey. That's the beauty of it. So while we're waiting for this to dry, we'll put these aside and we'll continue on our little book.
All right, so try not to get those messy. I don't know if I cut a piece for here because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. I have these ribbons and things, um, but I, I couldn't decide on what to put here because I didn't want to use the same paper again, and I don't have a huge assortment of paper, but I could do something like this. And maybe rip it. Now this isn't very strong paper, so it probably won't hold up as well, but that's okay. The book looks beaten up and used, and that to me looks even more cool. It means you love your lap book and you use it a lot. And then that piece we had could be fun to use elsewhere, which I've misplaced now. All right, where is my doohickey? I'll just dirty this up a little bit. Sorry, is my camera shaking? And we can do this more after as well. Let's get my proper ink out. Let's glue this guy down. See if he rips or not. It's a lot of hammering going on. Thank goodness. So this guy gave a little bit more of an edge so you can see it was a lot easier to glue. Enjoying my day off. I did some watercolor. I mean, some oil painting today. I did my housework. Still have laundry to do, which I don't want to do. Which I suppose could have been happening right now while I was doing this. That would have made sense. But let's just say I'm not much of a. Uh... Ooh, that didn't work out well. What's going on there? It's stretched. All right, we'll work with it. There we go it out so paper will stretch. Let's see how this turned out. Is it going to stretch? I'll put a little bit of that on. Where's my ink? I think I need some more. So I said I don't like so much blue, and I added more blue. <laughs> oh, funny. All right, so this is a thick cardstock, so I'm going to go pretty heavy on this glue. I don't mind if it oozes out, but I'd much prefer it sticks down. Much better and well. This guy's dry. Yeah, he's dry. So I'll put that there. Now, if I wanted to add some ribbon or something, I could do it now, but I don't really think I have anything small. I might glue something after, but I, I just love this piece. I'd add some more of that somewhere. It's just such a fun etching. And that book I got in a secondhand shop. And it's all the local Ontario townships and all their old mayors and the old streets and survey. And it was really cool. Everything was etched. So it was a pretty old book, but it was beaten up. And so I took advantage of it. 
I'm giving a new life in my junk journal world. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm going blue, which I like blue. I like most colors, really. It's not a color I don't like, but that's kind of fun. I think we'll add some gold to this. Ooh, yeah, let's do it. So I have my little gold, my mini gold here. I just feel like it needs a little something. I'm just gonna wet it and reactivate it. That's the beauty of watercolor, is it's not like acrylics. You can let it dry in the pan here and then it just instantly activates up. So I'm just gonna dab some gold. Now in this lighting, you might not see it because I'm actually, I didn't even think to turn my light on because it's so sunny out. I've actually got some really beautiful light coming in my room, but I forgot on film, it might be a different story. So I hope you can see this because I'm not starting this lab book again. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a little splatter of gold. Oh, and I love this paint. It's such a pretty paint. All right. I could go all day with that gold. And when it dries, I'll, I'll try and get it to reflect so you can see how pretty it is. Like right here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So we've got the outside with our paper framed. I'm not sure that paper's going to hold. There we go. Sometimes you got to stretch it. You're not ripping it. Okay, so that's the cover so far, which I kind of like. I haven't figured out a closure yet. I'm always uh, the last minute kind of thinking on the closure and most of my books never get them because uh, I never get around to doing them. They're usually just tied up with a piece of ribbon. All right, I like that for a cover. I think it's pretty. So another thing I did was I pulled out some papers and out of a, actually another journal that never got sewed. And they're all like the same kind of colors and different things in here. And they they just about fit perfect. And I thought that could go in the center. So that's the idea there. So I'm probably gonna tie that on. Uh, I haven't figured out if I'm gonna put a holes through here and tie them through all fancy, or if I'm just gonna run elastics through, we'll see. But today I wanted to, assuming that's dry enough, yeah, it's pretty dry. Can you see the reflection right here? I just love that gold. All right, so today I thought we would put in our actual paint tin. I was thinking too of other ways you could hold paint. And uh, you know the little plastic caps that you, uh, uh, not caps, but like you know, people who take pills on a daily basis, they have the little Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday thing. You could probably, because they snap closed, you could use your tube paint, pour, put tube paint in those little chambers and you could use something tall and thin. You can use something like that. You can use the tubes and tie, like elastically tie the tubes in. There's all kinds of different ways you could do this. I'm just going to use this tin and I have this box here. Uh, yeah, I'm a Betty Crocker kind of girl. That's how I cook. <laughs> I'm a terrible cook. So I'll take the easiest way to make something. I will take it because um, I really don't like cooking at all. Like at all. So that being said, I'm going off here gonna put this now you you would take your time and measure this and measure this but I'm just gonna wing it and we'll see what happens because everybody's little paints are gonna be a different size little paint trays or whichever way you decide to do yours it's gonna be a different size now the original that I had um, the original with this this actually came in a cardboard box so basically I took the box and I cut the box down to about here put paper and decorated the box and then just glued the box in and so we didn't have to build anything for this it was already done but for this I need a box so I don't need it quite so deep as this probably only need half I would say maybe am I working off screen again it, it's deceiving because my camera's way over, my phone's way over here but I guess the camera's on this end so it screws me up. Okay. So 
think we're going to go about, we'll just cut this back end off and then maybe just fold the wings where we need them. Again, just totally making this up. I'm sure there's a real proper way of doing this. I just don't know what it is. This is how I create trial and error. Okay, so I'm gonna just fold this over. I'm gonna fold this over. So this is where the bottom folds. So I'm gonna keep that. Now I don't want it overly tight. And I can't get the paints in and out, and I don't want it too loose where they just fall out too easily. So I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna cut right here where it overlaps. And then see where the edges are, and then do it a little bit of a neater fold. So I'm gonna fold this. this one and then this one already has a fold and then fold this one fold it straight <laughs> and then I'm gonna take it and fold it back on itself because I'm gonna leave the uh, better cro ready crocker to the inside Actually, maybe I will leave the Betty Crocker to the outside so that when you pull the paint out, you don't see the Betty Crocker. So we can decorate this side. That would make more sense. Okay, so we've got that. And we need to shorten, shorten these because they're overlapping. So I'm gonna cut down the side panels here where the folds are. That one's already cut because it's the corner of the box and then maybe just angle them a bit so they have less bulk when we fold them. Just like making an envelope, in theory. We'll see if it works. I could be dead wrong. <laughs> I could be wasting everybody's time. Fold that in, and then I can see how wide this needs to be by just folding it over, so I'm gonna cut it right about here. if we need to make some adjustments. Glue that in, glue that down, and glue that closed. And I think we have it. And box. I think that's it. So now I need to cut this way shorter to about just underneath the au gratin. Cheese. All right, let's see if we got it. Put this in, wrap it, and then like a present, and then glue it. Okay, so I'm just going to, it's a bit hard to explain as I'm doing it, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. You're basically building a 3D envelope. I'm just going to mark here where I want this to line up and glue. All right, let's give it a go. Or should I, you know what, see, aha, I should wrap this in paper first. This is a lot easier to glue flat than it is to glue three-dimensional, as I just proved by doing the edges of the book. So what do we want to do on this? We are going to put it on this page. So I think I want to go something more neutral again. And again, I don't have a huge selection of neutrals, but we can use more of this map paper. It seems to be my go-to. <clears throat> So I'm just gonna make it easier on myself by gluing this whole thing down. And then just folding it. And cutting it out, in theory. 
sometimes crafting and just winging it is the funnest. It really is. When you're filming a video for other people, it's more stressful, that's for sure. But when you're doing this for yourself, like by the end of the day, you're just like, I made that. I totally made that. And maybe we'll cut this a little more straight. <laughs> go around here. I'm going to cut these little corners out. Again, like wrapping a gift or creating an envelope, you want to take out as much bulk as possible so that it's easier to fold. These aren't going to be seen anyways. Um, just the, the one flap is going to be seen. The rest are going to be folded inside of themselves. So like this, for example, it doesn't really need to be glued. Just this edge. Alright. Okay, so now I'm going to refold all those corners. And again, if the, the glue comes, if the box of paints or whatever it is you buy comes in a little box, you don't have to do all this part. Just use that box they come in. Okay, so it's nice and tight. This is going to get glued down, so this edge doesn't really matter. As long as the box is smooth and hopefully nothing falls out, and edges are even. I'm just going to mark this with a pen here so that I know where to put the glue. Put the glue to the inside of that line. And a substantial amount of glue because this box will be coming in and out a lot. Just line that line back up. Right there. And while we have the tin in there, probably be a little more patient. Let's fold these in. So I want my edges in. Yeah, I'm too impatient. Put elastic around it so we can proceed while that dries. That's my biggest downfall is a lack of patience. I really don't have a lot of patience. And we're just gonna fold that. Throw a little glue in here. Uh oh, running out of glue. Substantial amount of glue in here and on this piece. And then we'll push it all in and push it down. And hopefully, we have a half decent box. We just have to be patient and let that glue, let that dry. So I'm just going to hold it for a sec. <laughs> Take this off. And we can always put some tape on there too, because again, that part is not going to be showing. Do I have my tape here? Probably not. Do I have any tape? Mm -mm. Gosh, I have everything but tape, for heaven's sakes. No, I put my tape away. Oops, I let it go. So uh, if you put a, um, a piece of clear tape right in here, just to reinforce it. I really wish I did have some tape with me. But I put it away, I guess. I don't remember putting that away. I mean, the odds of me actually tidying up is pretty rare. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> it's probably buried under all this stuff. I'll find it in a week. I finally have no choice but to tidy up. I just don't want to glue this in the book without it being for sure glued down. But I think we've got it. That's so cute. We can put something here. So what did I take out? I found some sticker. I took out a bunch of cute little things here. Just little scraps. Some scrap here. We see. I wish I had a little bit more blue paper. I'm going to have to stop and get some 
paper. Some more blue, just so I can do my borders that I like. I think these are astronomy or something, but they're kind of fun. And there's a little stamp, too big. What else did I bring out? Most of it's just plain paper. Oh yeah, and then I found some Elizabeth, what's her name? Edith Holden paper. And I, how could I not include some of this into this book? I mean, she's like a master watercolor artist. How fitting, look at the dragonfly, that's so pretty. So I thought, definitely wanna use some of her stuff in here. And I love the writing. So I was wondering if we had something small we could cut out. Something like this. You know what, I'm gonna use my ruler. I haven't buried it. So this a way, did I, nope, here it is. See if we can get something like this in there. Decorate our little. Yeah, her little. What's it called? Edwardian lady, Edwardian lady, or something. And it's all her watercolor work. It's just stunning stuff. So let's ink the edges. This thing's a bit dark. I use it sparingly because it looks more black than it does brown. And I find things get a little dirty with it too fast. I like to stamp letters and words with those, but that's probably it. And then I had some stickers. I found these really cute little blue butterflies. I have no idea where they came from. I just got to dig everything up. Here they are. Uh, I don't know where I got them from, but I was just rifling through my stash. And I found them, so that would work. Blue would work, right? I think. Maybe that's too blue. It's not going on a super blue background. But it will tie the blues in, so I think it works. I also have these little plastic coin holder things that I like to put pressed flowers in. I thought I had one of those ready too. My goodness. I really was anxious to film this video on my day off, but I really didn't prepare. I mean, I thought I was prepared because I pulled stuff out last night, but I really didn't prepare it on my desk. <laughs> you guys know me by now. <laughs> this is just how I roll. All right, let's put some more ink on here. So I'm gonna pull this out. So there's our little box. Let's put some ink on here. I'm gonna have to spray it in here again. You just wipe this out with a damp um, paper towel and it will clean it, everything off nicely. So I'm gonna... Again, this is a bit wet, so it's adding more than I would like, but that's okay that there and I think this is a sticker I don't know if I like this butterfly I think it's just too blue for me I'm not big on the bright blue I like blue accents but I'm too drawn to neutrals again I don't know where these came from there's one with brown that's better let's try this one see if I like this one better I mean, what are the odds of having blue butterflies in my stash? Somebody must have given them to me. This one I like. I think I, oops, I think I like this one better. It's got the brown in it. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it offside because I might add something here later. Um, I'm gonna put this back in so it holds the shape while I glue this down. And now I've got my watercolors ready to glue in the book. Which is always good and I'm starting to lose the light so I'll probably end it here for today. 
I am uh, starting to go behind the trees. So it's going to get real dark in here soon. This is one of the, wow, I got it right away. Holy smokes. Um, yeah, because I think I might add like maybe a little stamp or something up here. That will do for now. And I'm going to glue it in. So here's the corner of the book here where it folds. So I'm going to make sure I don't glue over top of that. And I'm going to give it a real good dollop of glue and put some weight on it. This one we'll have to wait for because this will take quite a beating. And again, you can do this a few ways. You can tie this in with elastics. You don't have to build a box. Do whatever look you're looking for. Okay. So, hold that for a sec. So that's that for today. And uh, I think we will leave it there because the hammering and <laughs> all of the light changing is uh, starting to wear on me. But I did want to film something for this week. So I think that's kind of cute. And again, we can change that up. We can add things. We can put lace on here after. But for now, I think that works. And this has come off because I'm not being patient. And then we built our little watercolor box. So we pull out our watercolors. And then we're ready to paint. And this can work as a little palette. And of course, I would clean that. And you, again, like I said before, you can buy these little... Um, quarter pans and half pans anywhere but you can find a solution to what it is you're looking for in um, the book you're you're building um, just think outside the box no pun intended all right pun intended <laughs> and that's it for today so there we go guys and that's what it looks like there again if you wanted to move ahead and put in your little signatures you can you can build again build your box any way you want to and uh, have fun with it have fun with your lap book and uh, we'll do some more next time we meet take care everyone bye